Yeah. Howdy, y'all. Mark Wheeler here again, and uh, we're gonna make mac and cheese. Um, this is homemade mac and cheese um, from the Joy of Cooking book. Watch out, Haley. So, I'm gonna break it down for you with my own twists um, and the like. So, first thing you're gonna do when making mac and cheese, I know people are gonna start watching here soon. Um, but with the first couple things you need to do is you need to make a roux. Um, for this recipe, it's two tablespoons of, um, of butter, two tablespoons of flour. Basic. Okay. Four, excuse me, from my wonderful assistant. Um, four tablespoons of butter, four tablespoons of flour. Except you have to make two cups of white sauce. And then two Did cups of, of milk. Move, Haley. Move. Ah, that means. Wait. The recipe calls for two cups of white sauce. So, the few things that we're going to do differently is the seasonings and the kind of the process. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm finely dicing some white onion. And for those that, that have watched my other video, it's um, on uh, like the blue cheese dressing. By using onion, it adds that, that secondary flavor and it's a very, very fine dice. Add that in there. Once your, your roux and milk mixture starts to get thick, okay? Um, and it's only half a large white onion. Medallia is fine. Um, purple onions though, tend to be a little overpowering. And if you only have purple, use only a quarter of an onion. Fairly finely diced. Turn your media, heat on medium. You should, the whole process here is pretty much done on a medium heat. At this point, salt, pepper, and seasonings. So I'm gonna grab the salt. Just about a tablespoon of salt. Um, about 10 good grinds of black pepper. A little fine. It's about 10 there. Bay leaf, fresh bay leaf, only a half a bay leaf if it's fresh, two if it's dried. You gotta open it because it's new. Hey Sal, uh, hey Dean. So two bay leaves. We're gonna make this awesome. Um, we're gonna use a couple different seasonings. Um, as well, and we're gonna like good chili. If you think of it like chili, right? Chili, you season several times throughout the process. Say hello, Haley. Hello. Um, so we're gonna season it with some about a table, tape about two teaspoons of chipotle powder. It's gonna add a little smokiness and as well as um, a little bit of heat. Roasted garlic powder, or just garlic powder is fine as well. Add that in there. Again, about the same. Because um, I really like a smoky uh, flavor. We're going to add just a little bit of smoked paprika as well. Adding these seasonings now are going to help break down and infuse with that onion that's already been added. So with the onion sweating, is, is sweating in a liquid state, is going to make it um, soak some of those seasonings up as it's releasing them. Adding the salt is crucial as well because it's going to help to release the liquid within the onion. So your your roux and white sauce mixture in the very beginning, okay, is going to get real hard. You're going to add the onion to it. The onion's going to sweat out. It's going to thin out a little bit, and that's what we're looking for. And if it starts to get too thick on you, add a little bit more more milk to it. Milk half and half or heavy cream. Uh, we use half and half. Um, that's a little different from the recipe. So as we're doing that, always have your second pot of water kicking as well so this way the trick is don't let your noodles cool down before you add them okay and we're gonna get there in a few minutes because it's cooking um, mac and cheese is pretty simple I see people think overthinking it um, adding Velveeta and those are great additions uh, sour cream is a great addition um, but the the basics of it are Keep it on medium. You gotta watch it. You don't want it boiling, nor do you want it 
blowing everywhere and you don't want to take it too low where it takes too long because then what will happen is your your sauce will break and uh, let me show you what, what I mean here okay all right there's the sauce okay you can bring this around see how it's just starting to bubble I need to turn that down just a touch I went on a light simmer okay see those bubbles that's what I'm looking for right there all right now for all my diabetic friends I just saw Chuck Red for Chuck what's going on man um, you, you you don't have to leave mac and cheese uh, alone okay um, the great thing about mac and cheese is that you can use whole wheat you can use rice flour noodles you can use a di uh, the 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 noodles you wanted for your diabetes. Because you're only using two tablespoons of, of flour, right, you can, re in all honesty, be low on your, your sugars and, and your carbs and still be golden because um, you're using cheese, okay? Um, freshly grated is good. Um, if you don't have fresh grated, I think we've got the bag stuff today. Um, yeah, we got a big bag of, the, of this stuff. Now you saw how much was in my pan. This is about a 12 inch pan, about three inches deep. It's only gonna make two cups of, of white sauce. It's a bechamel, okay? Daddy, what is still Almost, Haley. Um, but this is my my favorite. Yeah, let me see it, dude. Mm, Haley. <laughs> corkscrews. Elbows are good, corkscrews are better for this sauce. Now you saw the color of it. No cheese has been added at this point. That's just from the seasonings. Um, cumin works well. Thyme works well. A um, few other things work very well. But um, just a basic joy of cooking white sauce. Add your flavors as it goes along. And you can try this now. You can put this on uh, fish. You can put this on um, like a, a quick steak, like a Denver steak. You can uh, cube steak, very good as well. Um, you just change the flavorings. If you add more pepper, if you want to put on a cube steak, give that country. It's just a country gravy, basically. And in, in all, if you think of it that sense, it's a country gravy. Um, so now it's just very slowly bu bubbling. That's what I'm looking for. Now you want to let this cook for at least 10 to 15 minutes, okay? What that's going to allow it to do is it's going to let those onions soften up completely. You, that's why you cut them fairly fine. So up until this point, ingredients and technique. Nice big pan, that's, that's number one. Number two, okay, you're gonna use four tablespoons of butter. Sweet cream, uh, uh, salt added, okay? You want some salt in there. Number three is four tablespoons of flour. Bobbing head is my daughter Haley. Say hello, Haley. Hello. Okay. I just said that. I just um, said that. So, once you get that going, you make your roux, okay? Yes. Add your milk. Uh, it's two and a half cups of milk. I add a little bit more, okay? After that point, you know, let it thicken up a little bit on medium, low heat, okay? Let it start to get thickened the whole time whisking it. You wanna keep keep this stuff moving, okay? Otherwise, it'll become one big glob and you won't get anything. Uh, it'll just get bad, okay? Chop up half an onion, half a white, large white onion, Okay, chop it up. All right, actually, it's more like a quarter, to be honest with you, because you cut it in half and then you cut it um, in half again. So, once you get all that done, okay, you diced it very fine on that onion. You can use a food processor if you want. Dump that in there and mix it, uh, mix it together. Aunt Janine says hello, Haley. Okay. Now, after you add the onion, add some flavor. Um, you can add yeah, chili powder, smoked paprika. I use chipotle powder, uh, garlic powder, smoked paprika again, uh, cayenne pepper, great addition. Thyme, ground oregano, ground cumin. If you want to give it a uh, south of the border flavor, um, or just leave it no flavor at all. And that's a very honest way to do it. But you have to have bay leaf. Bay leaf is going to give you that that flavor in the back of your jowls, 
Okay, best way to explain it. Um, so this is doing its thing. And then you need cheddar. For the basic one, cheddar's perfect for this. Okay, if you want to take it up a notch. Uh, Swiss, shredded Swiss cheese. Um, smoked Gouda, another great addition. Um, Gruyere, gives it that smooth uh, cream cheese, really good. Um, you can add Velveeta if you, if you want to, um, not for me. Say hello, Marky. Say hello. Hello. What are you doing? Playing? No. Go. Playing. Out of the kitchen. You know the rules. Don't play in the kitchen. Look. Yep. There's no playing in the kitchen. So, just keep moving this, this point around. This is when you can be doing other things. If you're making other sides, but this is going to be our main dish along with some chicken and some other stuff. Daddy, what? This is from that wine of cheese. I know. No, not from. It's from daycare. I'm going to give it back tomorrow. So, water's almost boiling. Um, we use. I, 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 do reach. We use corkscrews for this. Um, the sauce is rather thick. And we found that it was collapsing normal elbows or shells. Okay, big corkscrews work perfect. Daddy, I'll, um, I'll dump it. I'll dump it. You'll dump it? Yeah. Okay. It's a really good one to do with kids as well because it's time consuming. You can talk to them, you can you know, help them do things. Don't let them to cut. <laughs> Aunt Sally says hello too. Hello. <laughs> And this is something that you can do several dishes out of. After this sets up, after you're done eating it, <clears throat> put it in the bottom of a pan um, or in a, 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 a glass cookware that's greased, and you let it cool. It'll firm up real good, and then you can slice it into chunks. Take it, put it in the freezer for 30 minutes, really tighten it up. Take it out, flour it, egg wash, uh, breadcrumbs, Ritz crackers were great, and then fry them in a pan and make um, fried macaroni and cheese. Um, you can take them as well. Um, don't do that. Um, take them as well and make uh, uh, stuffing. You can stuff uh, a pork chop with them. You can stuff a burger with them. Uh, you can do a lot of things with them because now it's a hard solidified object. But I highly recommend adding uh, things like cream cheese, things that stay soft and malleable uh, after the cooking process. Yeah, but you're going to have to add more cheddar or more cheese as well to your initial mix so something to keep in mind and also your your base white sauce this is what you it's basically how we're doing it is we're making one base sauce okay we're adding tons of cheese to it in a minute and the cheese is going to help um, flavor everything but the sauce is what's going to keep the cheese from not balling into a big ball okay it's very important that way cork screws are ready to go in now, this is when you want to get ready. You want to have your cheese ready. Your noodles will set. Your, your, your stuff, your, your white sauce is ready to uh, be added um, or have the addition of the cheese. You want your water boiling. You want everything ready to go because it's going to run about 10 minutes worth of time before everything comes together at the end, okay? It's very important that your noodles are as hot as possible when they enter the sauce or you put the sauce on top of the noodles. The reason for that is it's going to help thin out the, the, the sauce. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. The sauce is very thick um, up until this point. It's going to help thin it out, and it's going to make it easy to, uh, uh, to eat, okay? As well as, very important as well, is that if you're going to use this as a baked macaroni and cheese, okay, you do not want to add things like cream cheese or briere or smoked gouda um, you can put them on top just not in the mix because they will break you'll get oil on the bottom and it's not gonna be as great and the cream cheese is going to separate itself from the heavier cheeses um, like cheddar and stuff like that and you'll, you'll just have broken oily nastiness so stick to cheddar uh, mild sharp a sharp would be golden so my daughter is going to add the Noodles. Go ahead, all of them. Without dumping them all over the stove. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. So now this is how 
that looks. Say hello, Haley, again. Hello. I can't. I don't want to see. Okay, so that's with the sauce. See, I can see the bottom. It's kind of sticking together, but it comes in. But like that, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. I'll mix it. I don't want you to get burned, okay? I know you're you're invincible. I'm gonna mix it. Okay. And we're only using a 16 ounce box of of corkscrews. So if that if you need to know that, we're using extra sh or we're using sharp cheddar, shredded already, craft. Um, something special. And it's just slowly you're gonna stir and just slowly just shake it out. Okay. Um, wait until it's pretty much completely melted. This is where you might want to turn up your heat just a smidgen as well. To a medium, medium high. Keep adding your, your cheese nice and slowly at a time. Don't just pour it all in, otherwise, you will get that glob effect. No one likes globs unless you're making dough. We're not making dough, we're making mac and cheese. So, you're going to keep on doing this. Keep on doing it. Well, maybe maybe in a minute okay now it's real thick and you see why it's very important to wait until the very end uh, went to uh, do this right bef before your uh, noodles are done okay what that's going to do is it's going to um, you don't want the noodles waiting before you add them because you need the liquid from the noodle water to help thin this out okay Almost ready to add the last, and this is a this is a pound of cheese. Oh, yeah, no, that's how we do it. There's something there. Yeah. Take it out. Okay. There's a bag a bit, yeah, I know. Okay, so now it's pretty much all incorporated. Okay. You see that? Need my belly to hold the pan in place, but it's stupid thick. Okay. So with that real thick sauce, it's going to help to get in there. So what happens is you have the corkscrews, have the water inside of them, completely dump them out, dump them back into here, okay? Um, the water that's inside there is going to be pushed out when you mix it all together. It's going to come in and it's going to mix into the, the whole batch, okay? And yes, you are being schooled, uh, Jadine. Um, Now remember, you turned up the heat, you gotta turn down the heat once you're done mixing, incorporating it all. Okay. Um, but the water's gonna be forced out and it's gonna mix in with everything, it's gonna thin everything out to a better consistency. But it's the water inside, because of the cheese and the flour and the, and the milk and everything, when the water's being pushed out, it's gonna pull the sauce back in and pull it in and mix together in its own way. So this way you get a bite and it's an explosion of of cheese sauce instead of a bite and just coated cheesy noodles. Hope that helps. Um, now, with this base, you got this base right here, you can make a beer cheese soup. Okay, as long as you start with this base, you're gonna take sharp cheddar, mild cheddar, smoked gouda. You're gonna take um, uh, uh, block American cheese. Go to the deli and just get yourself a half pound of block of American cheese. Okay, and the last one, surprisingly, is um, Swiss, shredded Swiss, pounds, pounds of each. Okay, a pound of each, you're going, what? Because you're gonna take a six pack of high quality beer and do it in a big pot and pour that in there as you're adding the cheese. One pound of cheese, one beer. One pound of cheese, one beer. You make a beer cheese soup. I prefer yingling. And I just heard the mmm coming from the stadium over here, okay? Um, you can take, uh, uh, add croutons to it when you go about ready to serve it. It's absolutely the bomb. Um, you can also take it and take it, make a beer cheese cheeseburger soup. Okay, brown some ground round, not ground beef, but ground round because it's not very fatty and it'll break up really good inside of there. Pre cook the, the ground beef, add the onion, make the sauce, do everything like that. Then you get the flavors of, ground, of, a, of a cheeseburger um, and then top it with. Um, sun dried, diced sun dried tomatoes or pesto, and uh, it's really good as well. But the whole trick is you gotta have massive forearms 
to keep whisking, okay? And shoulder muscles. There's a lot of whisking. You may stir it, yes. Stir, stir. This is stir, okay? That's a stir. Watch your arm. You're getting very close to that, okay? So now let's show you the cheese sauce. Okay, see how incorporated it is? This is where you do not want to have high heat at this point. Otherwise it will break and people are going, what are you talking about breaking? When the sauce breaks is when the proteins that are holding everything together, okay, basically can't hold it together. All right, they've sucked up all they have and there's all this heat and what happens? It sweats. Well, what's it sweating? It's sweating all the fats that it's already picked up, all the liquids it's already picked up. So you get a separation of oils and liquids and solids. And there's almost zero coming back from that. Unless you are Popeye and you sit there and you have three hours to whisk the piss out of it, it will never come back. So this is the point where you turn down your heat real low. Okay, you just want just to keep the heat going. You just want one little bubble. Boop. Boop. That's all you want. You don't want anything crazy. So drink a beer, add cheese, drink a beer, add cheese. I can do that. Yep. Yep. Um, your kids must have come home. Yes, they have. Um, say hello, Haley. Hello again. Hello. She's the queen of hellos. No, I'm not the queen of hellos. Okay, now this is where you want to taste as well. Watch out, baby. Oh, oh. you only need to stir it once. Don't want to break up those noodles, okay? It's okay. I know. I thought it was a lot. If you, if you mess up, you know what the great thing is? You can start over. So we're going to taste it. Oh, I want it. Mmm. Eat anything? Mmm. Wait, it is. Don't eat anything? Mmm. Mm. I got to cut the end. We'll taste it. Be right back. So it's good. Um, and Lisa, you're gonna get a like. Sit here, like, like, and like, like. I gotta go through here and like all these. So we're gonna keep on stirring. The admiral has signed off. Hydration is a must. Marky, what are you doing, dude? Taste? Yeah. Mm. No, all four of us are tasting taste. Do not do that. Mm -hmm. There we go. Out of my kitchen. <laughs> Check the noodles for doneness. You don't want, if you're going to drop the noodle. Um, I know. Now, what you want? Hey, Chris. You're fine. What you want to do is have an dente. If you're going to do fresh mac and cheese, if you're going to bake it. You want it um, a little harder than al dente. It's going to have more time to cook and it's going to soak up all those things. Yeah. Okay. About ready to do this. All right, Haley, yeah. you're gonna be in charge of videotaping. Okay. What? Come right here. Hey. All right. Right in, in there. All right. Hold it just like this. Okay. Yeah. Just like that. All right. Okay. Um, we're gonna quickly drain. Put back in here, in this pot, the, the noodles, and put this inside of there. Mom, Dad, you have more people. I have more people? Yes. Awesome. I see. Oh, I, well. I see a wheeler. You see a wheeler? Yeah, right here. Which one? 
over here, and then another one right here. Yep, that's that's mm -hmm. uh, Aunt Jean and Aunt Sally. Aunt Jean and Aunt Sally? Yeah. That's them? Here we go. Water's off. Here, this. We'll be right back, guys. Nice news, Dad. Back in there. Back over. Pop the whisk one more time through over there. See, it's just starting to break a little bit. Got to get it in the saw. Drop the stuff everywhere. Okay, I'm the taste tester. You're the taste tester, I know. Fine. So it's back inside there. Turn off the heat on that one. No, I'm Put the heat back taste on there. Nice medium heat. And stir. And stir. And stir. And stir. Stir. Wait. That's not finished. Hey, hey, hey. And. Voila. This is what you get. Alright. Let's try it now. That's it. Simple and easy. Um, nothing too crazy. You can hear it's bitter in the spot as I turn the heat back up on it. That'll be everything. But it's very crucial that you don't drain or or cool down those noodles at all before you add them. Because um, that sauce, you saw how thick it was pouring back in there. You don't want them to hit the noodle and stop coming in. You want them to fully engulf themselves and pull through them. Um, now, I gotta make green beans. We're having with this. You don't know how to do a green bean. Really Daddy, simple. Daddy, what? Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. We'll, try, we'll try it in a minute. You have a green bean. Nope. Come, come get, let's get plates you have a knife. Forks. Trim the end. Like, the cut right there. Just a little end on the knife. On there. Okay. And if you want to French them, you split them down the, down the seam. But I'm all I'm gonna do is come in half. That's it. Instead of green bean. Okay. Got a second pan going. A little pan. And just a little bit of water. Green beans don't take long to cook. So while that's this is going on, just keep stirring it. Grab your knife. Trim, marquee. Now you want to wash, dude. Oops. Okay. Put that in the sink. Sorry. You just want to trim the ends. Yeah, yeah. What that's going to do is going to allow the green bean to, to pull some of the water and steam inside, cook the bean, and release quickly. That's the whole goal. So do it quickly. Okay. So if you snap them, see so you have this little bean? All right. And it's got a fibrous inside. Okay. What you want is that heat. To shock it, when it shocks it, it's going to expand. You're going to pull water in. You're going to, this is about a minute's worth of time frame. Um, in a minute's time frame, it's going to cook it. Cook it the perfect tenderness. And tenderness being the key word here. So we want it to crack, to crack, but we don't want it to be smooshed as well. So. How do you know when it's done? Daddy, when I eat the skin, I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. So how do you, so re, how you know it's done, okay, if you're going to steam vegetables or anything else, is if the color of the vegetable turns very bright colored. Brighter than when it started. So we're going to take comparison here. And I'll show you what a done one looks like. What are you doing? Out of my kitchen. Mommy? Yes, you too. Well, I'm the taste tester. 
Wait, when you... I don't need a taste tester right now. Yeah. So, I want to cheat. Add butter right now because the water is just starting to boil. Okay. By, um, yuck. By adding butter right as it starts to boil, it's going to lower down the temperature, add flavor. And you got to wait for it to reboil again. Water's boiling. I'm going to take my handful, handful at a time. It's a big old handful. <coughs> Excuse me. In the boiling water. Mix them around. Move them around a little bit. So, so, so for comparison, that's what one looks like. Okay. Before it goes in. You can see through it and you see the bean. It's kind of cool. I'm just sw I'm swirling the pan. Okay, and the pan's moving around, so it's moving all that water as well. Now, what you want to do is you want to watch it. Okay. Beans naturally float because there's air inside of them. Well, what I want to see them do is sink. Okay, so the moment they start to sink, they straighten the strainer. It means that the, all the air pockets have been filled by hot water. That's why I said add some butter first. If you add butter for it, before it, the butter will may, allow will suck inside there. So when you bite into it, it's a buttery explosion. And Rhonda, I hope you're still watching. Because uh, that's why restaurant food is so much better than the stuff you make at home. Butter. Alright, just sink. And that's the color difference. Look how much darker green that is compared to the light green. See the difference? Oh my god. So much better. And butter's good for you, too. Okay. Dad, All this is cream and salt. Dad, can you give me a napkin? Whoever tells you that, uh, Daddy. Uh huh. That butter is bad for you. <laughs> don't have taste buds. I mean, look at—they're putting butter in coffee now because of the health factors. Um, that's it. So we got the mac and cheese. We got the um, uh, uh, beans done, add a little bit of salt. Okay, over the left shoulder. I like them sauteed with onion and garlic and tossed with Parmesan. Oh yeah, uh, green beans are great like that. But anyway, you do a green bean. A little bit of salt, pepper. So. Marines can't cook, Chad, huh? Uh, I'll blow your mind, dude. So, here we go. How's that mac and cheese, Rhonda? Alright. Yeah. A um, couple of green beans. There you go. Simple. Nothing too crazy. Paper plate, because that's how we roll. Um, it's real simple. Um, go ahead and rewatch the video. Um, Rhonda, I know you're trying to lose a lot of weight. You can use um, uh, wheat flour, wheat based noodles. Just gotta make sure that they're like corkscrews or they're heavy duty, thick noodles. Which job? Um, to hold the sauce. Okay, it's very important. Um, if you don't have a really thick noodle, especially because wheat flour is not as strong as the enriched flours that they're using, because it doesn't have as much gluten in it. And gluten's good. Okay, gluten's a good thing. Um, this is crazy. People have thought that gluten's a bad thing. If you have a celiac disease, the only people that need to worry about it. And, uh, yeah. Thank you, Daddy. More people survive off of gluten every day their entire lives, and, uh, you know, we can fit in our faces in a two-hour period. Also, uh, fish, I fished out the, the bay leaf um, earlier uh, while I was mixing everything in. So, there you go. Big old plate of, of 
awesome, creamy goodness. What's next? Tell me, what do you want to see? I guess tomorrow's tacos. Uh, beef tacos? Yes. Uh, chopped tacos? Yes. Okay, chopped beef tacos. So there you go. That's good. dinner for tomorrow. If you guys want to watch, I'm off at 5, so I'll probably start cooking around 5.45. Um, I actually got the... Here. Here. So, if you want to cook along... Go to your local butcher shop and ask them for chili grind. Okay, not carne asada. We're making true street tacos. Um, more of a um, uh, a pan-based taco. So you, what you need is chili grind, or you dice some stew meat, really small. Okay. Some other things you're gonna need is cumin. Chipotle powder, if you don't have chipotle powder, that's fine, but you need cumin. You need salt, you need pepper, you need lime juice. Um, anytime there, Chad. And a couple other seasonings as well. Um, onion and uh, tortillas. You make uh, 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 pico de gallo. Might make some guacamole. Um, salsa verde. Uh, we're going to make some salsa verde as well. Uh, I think that's about it. So uh, tune in tomorrow. We're making something. Just tacos. Some chili grind. Ground beef will not suffice. I'm going to take you to a whole new level. Mmm, chili? They want to make chili? No, not Taco Bell, Sal. Um, they, this will make Taco Bell obsolete. I'm telling you right now. So no ground beef. Don't cheat. Go get that chili grind. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go eat. So, hope everyone has a great night. I'll catch you next time. Or tomorrow night, I guess. Or later. Sure. Closing the cabinet now. Still here? Go away. Go.